I think it was her who contradicted herself because in, in one instance, it might have been her who said about another situation, or maybe someone else said about that era back in that day, you know, everybody did drugs and everybody slept with, with, with everyone, at home, you know, something along those lines. Just um, There's something about her that I have to read and check up on, that something that, you know, just has me not trustful of her claim anyway, so. Well, I mean, it's 40, it's, the problem is with all of these women is that it's past the statute. Most of them were past the statute, or all of them were past the statute of limitations for anything to be done if it was true. They had no rape kit. They had no police report. Uh, I saw online where they said one woman did report, uh, file a police report, but it was never admitted into evidence. Just like uh, with the O.J. Simpson case, you always hear about O.J. running away to Mexico with the Bronco chase with several thousand dollars and, and uh he had, he had mask. He had all his, all of his gear to be incognito. Yet the car is headed northbound, not southbound. And on top of that, yeah. that wasn't even admitted at his trial. But yeah. it's media frenzy, as we're talking about. And you know, on top of that, uh, when we compare it with the Michael Jackson case, did you know that there were over eighty-five boys that accused Michael, according to Tom Mesereau, of impropriety. And Bill has 60-something women accusing him of you know, almost the same number of doing impropriety, although half of them don't even say rape. Some say he touched right. me appropriately. And, and you, you also have – there's actually things that have been um, exposed with the Michael Jackson thing that makes you – could make you thought to think, hmm, with the Cosby case. There's a lot of people who expose the fact that they were bribed by people. Right. Um, to come up and say, hey, uh, I think Ron Newt was uh, a funny guy. I think that's his name. The Gremlin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Play him. Yeah, I mean, he's so, yeah, he's a guy. He says he made uh, Empire and uh, he sued Lee Daniels for like a billion dollars. Oh, yeah. Talked yeah. about him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He, he had a, a um, relationship with the Jackson. He was at the Jackson estate. And he had his son, you know, posing with the glove and everything. And there was a picture of his his son either coming out of the pool or whatever. And he was approached. Right, I heard this. Two hundred thousand dollars to just say your your kid was uh, touched by Michael or come up with a story. And this is the same mo that that you know yeah happens with these sort of things. And when these people have certain enemies, where whether it's racial which a lot of people believe, what, whatever, whether, whether it's business related. But these things follow the same pattern where, you know, a lot of accusers shouldn't surprise anyone. A lot of people coming forward shouldn't surprise anyone. That's not a smoking gun right. where, where there's smoke, there's fire. That's just what happens. So. Right. Right. And uh, what you say about Michael, and I tie this with the Bill Cosby case, Michael owned, and we talked about music, he owned half of Sony's music publishing, and he also owned his own music publishing. And recently, the estate sold his, uh, I think his publishing for 250 million, and they sold the Sony stake in it for 750. But according to Dick Gregory, if the estate sold the whole thing, it would have been about worth about $40 billion. That's what Dick Gregory said? That's what he said, and Tom Mesro even said it was about worth actually about 4 billion at the time of the trial. Something, yeah, definitely in the billions. Um, so this hundred thousand stuff, I don't believe that. It definitely is in the billions. In right. billions. It included the Beatles and Elvis. So. Right. So, it included the Beatles, included Elvis. It also included Sly and a Family Stone, uh, yeah. Little Richard. Yeah. Uh, he owned half of Sony, which means he also owned Beyonce. Every time Jay-Z, Beyonce, uh, 50 Cent, Niles Rogers from Cheek. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Springsteen. I didn't know this too, but Michael owned the Christmas song, you know, just yeah. not roasting. So yeah. that, and Mel Torme wrote that song, co-wrote that with Robert Wells. That is one of the richest songs in music history. It's worth, I saw he made the Christmas, the Christmas song. Yeah. Chestnuts. If you look at the top 10, well, Christmas songs are very lucrative because they're played every year. Right. So every time they play, uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire 
they have to pay the estate of Mel Torme and Robert Wells, and they also have to pay the publisher, which would be Michael, Michael and Sony. So when people say broke, broke how? <laughs> you know, well, you know and he was rich in assets. And, right. uh, you know, but, but these things are coming from the media with their agenda and spin, so. You know, but he had, pick- yeah. Yeah, but, and then Prince, you know, with his situation, he finally got his catalog back uh, yep. with Warner Brothers, and then he died mysteriously. That's the, the Sam Cooke pattern, you know. Um, Sam Cooke, um, he set the blueprint for your independence in music. And yeah. he, was, he was another artist that didn't quite make it. So. He died young, and uh, who was Sam Cooke associated with? As far as what? Who the friend? Right, I'll put it this way: What civil rights leaders he was hanging out with? Oh, um, not sure actually. Where's glasses? Else, um, Malik he was he was with the, the Nation of Islam. Malcolm X. I yeah. know, but he. I didn't know that he was because uh, I know that he was very. Um, well, a lot of people were 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 active in the in the city. Well, he was close friends with Malcolm X and uh, Muhammad Ali. How he wrote that that, that I knew Muhammad right. Ali. He cut an album with Muhammad Ali called "The Gains All Here" before he died. And but did but, he specifically help the Nation of Islam or Malcolm, Malcolm X? Well, it was well. You got to remember something, uh, Drew. In this 1960s. If you were associated with those people, or if you were a black entertainer, and this is even with Bill Cosby, uh, you know, if you were a black entertainer who could make change, or anybody who had money, you were watched very closely. Yeah. Uh, Richard yeah. Pryor even has FBI files because he gave money to the Black Panther Party. Uh, wow. Had groups like George Carlin, who was what not black, but he was white. He had an FBI file, so. Hoover kept files on uh, hundreds of people, and it came out, you know, that he was actually a gay and a crossdresser too. So that's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, matter of fact, with Bill Cosby, I didn't notice till later that Bill Cosby in the seventies was on Richard Nixon's uh, his enemy list, enemy list, as yeah. well as Dick Gregory, uh, Jane Fonda, who yeah. spoke, Jane Fonda yeah. spoke shit on Bill Cosby as well. She did what? She talked shit on Bill Cosby as well. So I'm not really cool with her. Uh, You know, she did the same. What's interesting, she was best friends with Michael, but you never saw these people when Michael was at trial, you know, when they're supporting him. A lot of, well, Hollywood, there's a lot of fear in in Hollywood. That's why there's a a lot of cooning. That's why there's a lot of people just kind of stand out of the way when, you know, trouble befalls you. you know, I don't respect it, but I understand it to right. a certain extent. Um, you know, we have a lot of, look at what's going on with the athletes. Anytime someone takes a stand, people just kind of like, you know, they go collect their check. And they, they stay well, there. he is a sports slave. <laughs> I, I think that will be. How you doing, Dak? Yeah. <laughs> that, um, Yeah. <laughs> what can you say about that? That's why I don't even like the Cowboys. Anyway, but uh, it's a symptom of the of the times. You you, you got to understand this is socially engineered. They socially engineered for this sort of thing to happen. Where there's no pride, there's no um, loyalty, and there's no um, you know you, you just have these people who are just totally socially engineered. This would never take place in the 60s, you would never have, you know, those athletes, you know, something comparable and to have black athletes say, oh, well, no, they shouldn't do that and just disrupt, disrupt the Olympic services. They, there's just a social engineered mentality now where it's okay to cool. Well, I mean, that was going on. Well, that was still going on in the 60s because uh, if you remember when Ali took his stand, they went and got Jackie Robinson and Joe Lewis to talk down on Muhammad Ali. Now, Jackie, in all fairness, Jackie Robinson and Joe Lewis came from a different era. Uh, you know, they came from you know, my grandfathers. Both of my grandfathers served in World War II. Uh, I have respect for people in the military. I even thought about doing it. But, oh, yeah. yeah, I have. But, uh, 
you know, doing the Jack core, I'll say that I've thought about that, but at the same time, when they, my grandfather fought in world war two, when he came back home to new Orleans, what happened? He had to still, uh, ride in segregated street cars or couldn't eat at a Woolworths and get a cup of coffee. You know, those are things that black people have to go through and still, you know, we continue to uh, fight. So he, yeah. My, my, my thing is this, you have the right to your own opinion. Right. You know, no matter what it is, you don't have to even agree with the, the polling happening. But um, if nothing else, you should, understand what they're protesting about why they're doing it and just not saying anything if you're not on board right. why do you have to why do you have to make a show of you know like still being confused on why they're doing it because and, i don't even think it's confusion i think they know damn well what they're doing <laughs> at least most of them now because i saw uh miss benson uh here in new orleans the saints owner now yeah. Gail Benson, Tom Benson just died. As she talks about, she would talk with her players, but she expects them to stand. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you there still? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. No, it's she expects them to stand, uh, you know, because her husband was in the military. Wait, excuse me a second. You know, yeah, sorry about that. He was probably expecting me to give him the password to the Wi-Fi. Uh, okay. No, no, it's cool. Uh, he, uh, it's, it's, yeah, Ms. Benson, right. Well, I, just to just make my point right quick, Ms. Benson, I think, was mis greatly misunderstanding. It's not about the flag or the military or the protesters. Many blacks have fought in World War II and Vietnam and Korea and even in recent times but it's you're more my position on it is this you have the right to believe how you want but if you're more offended at players not standing for a flag which is a symbol and as great as america has been as a nation it hasn't been that uh, great for us for black people but if you're more offended by them taking a knee than you are seeing unarmed black men being shot in the back or shot in the chest like this man in Florida that got shot because of the stand your ground law. Yeah. Uh, and really that's not up for the police to decide whether there's going to be charges. It should be the state that should stand in the police job right. is to investigate the homicide because clearly when you look at the video, you know, he got shoved, but is that a reason for you to take my life? And this is what Kaepernick is talking about. This is yeah. what we're all talking about. It's, it's and part of the, the by the knee, then something's wrong with you. There's an ugliness to this, and um, you know the reality of the situation is that there is a, a problem. There is an issue that's not being dealt with, and you know there is a, a scourge of you know black males being shot down, police brutality that's not being dealt with. We're at the same place with Trayvon Martin, and Trayvon Martin, Amir Rice, and it's not Michael being Brown. Yeah. yeah. So when the players kneel, because of all that, to speak out and shoot that down, um, especially you know for, for black athletes, like there's got to be something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. Like you don't have to um, agree, like I said, with the protest, but to speak out against it, the reason why they're doing it, I have an issue with that. I, I don't. I don't. I don't understand it. Honestly. Right. And really, um, anyone's protest, anyone's protest for the greater good, environmental, whatever, yeah. I, whatever, however they choose to do it, I support you. Right. You know. Right. Interesting enough, Warren Sapp in 2003, he made a comment about how the NFL was like slavery. It's a corporation. Uh, there's actually, uh, I saw Boyce Watkins do a video about this where 